Before the most powerful machine ever built by humans was allowed to fire its first shot, a question had to be answered. It was not a question of budget, engineering or politics, it was a question of existence itself. The question was simple, and its implications were absolute. When we turn this machine on, will it destroy the world? This is not an exaggeration for effect. This was a genuine, scientifically grounded concern that had to be addressed before the Large Hadron Collider could collide its first particles. And at the heart of that concern was a theoretical object so terrifying, it sounds like something torn from the pages of cosmic horror. A particle that could eat the Earth from the inside out. They called it the Strange Let. The story of the Large Hadron Collider is often told as a triumph of discovery, a journey to find the Higgs boson, the so-called God particle. But there is another story, a darker and more unsettling prequel. It's the story of why some of the most brilliant minds on the planet had to pause and seriously consider the possibility that their creation could trigger a planetary apocalypse. One media report from the time notes that even before the collider opened, some people worried that it could form exotic matter that would destroy the Earth, possibly within seconds. This was not just fringe panic. This was a possibility that demanded the full attention of the scientific bodies overseeing the project. The entire project hinged on proving it was safe. To do that, scientists had to stare directly into the abyss of a hypothetical doomsday, one brought about by a single microscopic predator. Sir Martin Rees, a leading cosmologist and astrophysicist, once painted a chilling picture of what this end would look like. If this strange lit contagion were to happen, the Earth would become an inert hyperdense sphere about 100 meters across. Imagine that. Our entire world, every mountain, every ocean, every city, every living thing, compressed into a silent, dead ball no wider than a football field. This is the stake that was on the table. Understanding why this was even a remote possibility requires us to delve into the very heart of the matter itself. The anatomy of a world eater. The world we see is built from atoms. The hearts of those atoms, the nuclei, are built from protons and neutrons. For a long time, we thought that was the end of the story. But we now know that protons and neutrons are themselves composite objects. They are tiny bags, each containing three smaller, more fundamental particles, called quarks. Specifically, protons and neutrons are made of two types of quarks, the up quark and the down quark. These are the lightest and most stable members of the quark family. But the family is larger than that. Physicists have discovered heavier, more exotic siblings. One of them is called the strange quark. As the source material for this exploration puts it, strange quarks are heavier siblings that normally appear only fleetingly. They are produced in high-energy collisions, but they decay almost instantly into their lighter, more stable up-and-down cousins. They are ephemeral ghosts in the particle zoo. But what if they didn't have to be? In 1984, the physicist Edward Witten proposed a radical and unsettling idea. He called it the strange matter hypothesis. The hypothesis envisions a state of matter under conditions of extreme pressure, such as those found in the core of a neutron star. Witten theorized that in such an environment, a bulk mixture of up, down and strange quarks could actually be more stable than the ordinary matter made of just up and down quarks. It would be in a lower energy state. In physics, Lower energy is another way of saying more stable. Think of a ball rolling to the bottom of a valley. The bottom of the valley is its lowest energy state, its most stable position. Witten was proposing that our nuclear matter, the very stuff we are made of, might only be in a shallow valley and that a deeper, more stable valley, strange matter, could exist. This idea immediately presents a paradox. How can adding a heavier, less stable particle like the strange quark possibly make the entire system more stable? The answer lies in one of the most fundamental rules of the quantum world, the Pauli exclusion principle. This principle states that no two identical fermions, the class of particles that includes quarks, can occupy the same quantum state at the same time. Under extreme pressure, the up and down quarks in ordinary matter are forced into incredibly high energy states. The strange quark offers a theoretical loophole. By allowing some quarks to transform into strange quarks, the entire system can rearrange itself into a lower, more stable energy state. This gives rise to the hypothesis that strange matter, 
a mix of up, down and strange quarks, might be the actual ground state of the universe, more stable than the matter we're made of. A strange let is a hypothetical droplet of this absolutely stable matter, but its stability isn't the real danger, its contagiousness is. The theory suggests a strange let would act like an irresistible, exotic nucleus. If negatively charged, it would attract the positive nucleus of an ordinary atom. Upon contact, the strange let would instantly absorb the nucleus, converting its quarks into the more stable strange matter configuration. Having eaten the nucleus, the strange let grows larger and its pull stronger, setting off a runaway chain reaction. Like a monster snowball rolling downhill, a single microscopic strange let could potentially convert the entire Earth, one atom at a time. The Crucible Forging strange lets at the LHC This world-ending scenario remained a purely theoretical curiosity for years, a fascinating what-if confined to the dense core of neutron stars or the first moments of the universe. It was a problem for astrophysicists, not for people living on Earth. Then, humanity decided to build the Large Hadron Collider. To understand the connection, we need to recall what the LHC actually does. Deep underground on the Franco-Swiss border, the LHC is a 27-kilometer ring of superconducting magnets. Its job is to accelerate beams of particles to 99.99% the speed of light. It then smashes these beams into each other in head-on collisions of unimaginable violence. In these heavy ion collisions, two lead nuclei, each packed with over 200 protons and neutrons, slam into each other. For a brief, infinitesimal moment, the temperature and pressure in the collision zone become astronomical. We are talking about temperatures of trillions of degrees. The source material notes that at Brookhaven's RHIC Collider, a similar facility, the temperature reached was about 4 trillion Kelvin, a condition hotter than the core of any star. Under this immense heat and pressure, ordinary matter simply ceases to exist. The protons and neutrons literally melt. The quarks and the gluons, the particles that bind them together, are liberated from their confinement, creating a state of matter that has not existed in the universe since the first microseconds after the Big Bang. This is the quark-gluon plasma, or QGP. CERN's own description is vivid. For a microsecond, the universe was filled with a hot, dense soup of free quarks and gluons. The LHC is, in a very real sense, a time machine designed to recreate the primordial soup of creation. And it is here, in this primordial soup, that the theoretical terror of the strange let meets the practical reality of the LHC. In the searing heat of the quark-gluon plasma, strange quarks are not fleeting ghosts, they are produced abundantly. As this fireball of plasma expands and cools, the quarks must eventually recombine and hadronize, forming the ordinary particles like protons and pions that fly out into the detectors. This cooling process is a phase transition, like steam condensing into water, and it was here that theorists saw the danger. A recent review on the topic explains the concern perfectly. The droplets of strange quark matter, strangelets, may be formed during the cooling process of the QGP, the very process the LHC was designed to study. The transition from quark-gluon plasma back to normal matter was a potential factory for producing the seeds of our own destruction. Suddenly, the strange let was no longer a distant, astrophysical curiosity. It was a potential byproduct of a machine we were about to turn on. Could the LHC, in its quest to understand the birth of the universe, accidentally trigger its end? This was the question that CERN's safety committees had to answer. The case for our continued existence. Faced with a scenario straight out of science fiction, the physicists at CERN did what scientists do best. They calculated. They scrutinized. The resulting safety reviews, conducted by bodies like the CERN Safety Study Group and the LHC Safety Assessment Group (LSAG), represent a masterclass in responsible science. They systematically dismantled the doomsday scenario, piece by piece. The first line of defense was a deep dive into the theory itself. The nightmare scenario hinges on a very specific type of strange let, one that is both absolutely stable and carries a negative charge, which would initiate the chain reaction. However, more realistic theoretical models revealed a crucial flaw. The document references detailed work by the physicist Jess Madsen and his collaborators, who showed that, Small strangelets, 
cannot remain negatively charged or grow indefinitely. So what's the off switch? It's the strange let's physical structure. A tiny strange let has a dense, positively charged core of quarks surrounded by a sparse cloud of negative electrons. Because this electron cloud is so spread out, an approaching atomic nucleus, which is also positive, sees the positive core first. The two positive charges repel each other, preventing the strange let from ever getting close enough to eat the nucleus. It effectively wears a suit of positive armor. Even better, the process is self-terminating. If a strange let somehow managed to capture one nucleus, it would also absorb its positive protons. This would instantly flip the strange let's own charge to positive, causing it to repel all other nuclei. The chain reaction stops after a single meal. The predator is declawed and defanged before it can truly hunt. The second and arguably most powerful argument against the LHC doomsday scenario is not found in complex equations, but in the silent testimony of the cosmos itself. Physicists emphasized a simple, profound fact. Nature has already run this experiment. For billions of years, our planet, our moon, and every other object in the solar system have been bombarded by cosmic rays. These are particles, launched from distant supernovae, that travel across the galaxy at incredible speeds. As the CERN Safety Assessment Group put it, whatever the LHC does, nature has already done many times over during the lifetime of the Earth and other astronomical bodies. The key point is that many of these cosmic rays have energies far, far greater than anything the LHC could ever hope to achieve. This provides the ultimate safety check. If collisions at LHC energies could produce a world-ending strange let, then the far more powerful collisions from cosmic rays would have already done so billions of years ago. This isn't just a logical argument, it's an experimentally verifiable one. We have actively searched for the consequences. How would we even know if a strange let had hit the moon? An impact would not just create a crater. A strange let would burrow into the lunar surface, converting matter and releasing a unique burst of energy. A starquake on the moon, with a seismic and radiation signature, unlike any normal meteor impact. Our analysis of the moon, using both seismic data from the Apollo missions and telescope observations, has shown no evidence of such exotic events. The continued existence of the moon, a silent pockmarked witness that has endured 4.5 billion years of cosmic bombardment, is nature's final verdict that the process is safe. Furthermore, we look for strangelets here at home. The script mentions that the ALICE detector at the LHC has searched for them, but how does one even look for such a thing? The method is brilliantly simple. Detectors like ALICE are designed to measure the properties of the particles that fly out from collisions, including their electric charge and their mass. A strange let would have a truly bizarre charge-to-mass ratio. It would be incredibly heavy for its charge, unlike any known particle or atomic nucleus. In the flood of data from a collision, a strange let would stand out like a bowling ball in a stream of ping-pong balls. Despite billions of collisions and dedicated searches, no such object has ever been observed. Finally, the safety reviews considered the environment of creation. The apocalyptic vision is of a cold, stable, sticky, strange let emerging. But the reality of a particle accelerator is a fireball. Any strange let produced would be born in a seething plasma. The LSAG review notes that it would be incredibly hot and therefore much less stable. Instead of capturing other particles, it would almost instantly evaporate back into a shower of ordinary particles. Putting all these arguments together, the official conclusion was unequivocal. There is no basis for any conceivable threat. The geography of fear. So, if the science is so clear, why does the legend of the strange let persist? Why does this particular fear have such a powerful grip on our imagination? The answer is that the strange let contagion story doesn't just tap into scientific curiosity. It taps into a deep, ancient well of cultural horror. It is a modern retelling of an old and potent myth, the myth of the grey goo, the world-consuming plague. This archetype is a recurring motif in our cautionary tales. We see its reflection in Kurt Vonnegut's classic novel, Cat's Cradle, with his invention of Ice Nine. Ice Nine is a fictional phase of water that is solid at room temperature. A single seed crystal, dropped into any body of water, could trigger a chain reaction that would instantly freeze all the world's oceans, rivers, 
and even the water in our own bodies, ending all life on Earth. The mechanism is different, but the narrative is identical. A tiny bit of novel physics, a single point of contagion, and a sudden, total planetary death. We see it again in Michael Crichton's novel Prey, where swarms of self-replicating nanobots escape the lab and threaten to consume all organic matter in their path, a high-tech version of the same grey goo apocalypse. In hard science fiction, the Australian author Greg Egan took the concept to its cosmic extreme in his novel Child's Ladder. In that story, physicists create a new type of vacuum, a novo vacuum, that is more stable than our own. A bubble of this new reality begins to expand at the speed of light, consuming everything in its path, a doomsday scenario that threatens not just a planet, but the entire galaxy. The strange let fits perfectly into this mold. It is the ice nine of particle physics. It speaks to our fear of the unseen and the irrevocably transformative. It's the horror of a contagion that cannot be stopped, a fire that cannot be quenched because it consumes the very fuel of existence. This is why the story is so terrifying, even after we understand the science that debunks it. It's a well-crafted monster, the real frontiers of dread. The fact that we can dismiss the strange let as a kind of scientific ghost story does not mean that we live in a world free from existential threats. In fact, by dissecting this particular fear, we can better appreciate the contours of other, more plausible doomsday scenarios that physicists and futurists take very seriously. The strange let fear is a highly contrived corner of a much larger space of existential risk. Consider the idea of vacuum collapse, the very scenario imagined by Greg Egan. In quantum field theory, the vacuum of space-time is not empty. It is a roiling sea of quantum fields, and the state of our universe depends on the energy level of that vacuum. It is theoretically possible that our vacuum is not in the actual lowest energy state. It could be a false vacuum, a metastable state, like a ball resting in a slight dip on the side of a much larger valley. A sufficiently energetic jolt could, in theory, knock the ball out of its dip, causing it to tunnel to the proper, lower energy vacuum. This would create a bubble of true vacuum that would expand at the speed of light, rewriting the laws of physics and annihilating everything in its path. This sounds terrifyingly similar to the strange let scenario. So why is it different? Importantly, the same astrophysical argument applies. The LSAG report noted that if LHC collisions could trigger such a vacuum decay, then the far more energetic cosmic ray collisions should have done so billions of years ago. The fact that our universe still exists allows us to calculate that if a lower energy vacuum state does exist, the lifetime of our current false vacuum must be far, far longer than the current age of the universe. We are safe, not because the idea is wrong, but because nature has already proven our stability. From cosmic dread to clarity. The Strange Let Saga is a powerful lesson in how science confronts fear. While the concept of a world-ending particle makes for a great horror story, it was born from our fear of the unknown, not from evidence. By rigorously applying the laws of physics, scientists took this doomsday scenario, placed it under the microscope, and systematically dismantled it. The LHC's legacy was never going to be a planetary graveyard. It was the discovery of the Higgs boson and a deeper understanding of our universe. The real value of science is its ability to turn cosmic dread into clarity, to distinguish the monsters of our imagination from the real challenges we face.